Hi, my name is Simi John, and I am a speaker, author, full-time physical therapist, and I am married to Jason John, who is a pastor here at a local church in Norman, Oklahoma, and we have two beautiful little children. A little backstory about me. I was raised in an Orthodox home and through a series of miraculous events, God brought my family to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I was about 13 at the time. And I remember just falling in love with Jesus. I couldn't get enough of God's word. I went to every service that I possibly could, listened to every sermon on TV and took so many notes that I had a big old journal full of mini sermons. I loved with the word of God. And I remember so many times just opening the Bible up and I could feel the Holy Spirit speak to me and giving me the gift of discernment and the spirit of wisdom. And that's where I really started understanding the gift of communication and having this desire to share the message of the gospel of Jesus to other people. So throughout the years, I have spoken at different things like youth events, women's events, Sunday morning, morning services, as well as on YouTube and social media, especially Instagram. Last year, God gave me this burden to write a book and I'm a speaker, I'm not a writer. So I knew this was going to be a hard process. It was going to be a process that stretched me. So I kind of put it off and I said, God, this is great. I love the concept. I love the idea, but I can't do this right now. My plate is too full. And I remember one Saturday as I was walking around our neighborhood in this undeveloped area where they're just building homes, like spec homes. And I was walking around there praying and worshiping on a Saturday because I was speaking at church on Sunday morning. I stopped at this one house that was being built and I didn't know why I stopped. I just knew something in me stopped and I kept looking at the house and it kept happening every time I would circle around that house. And I stopped and I said, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to tell me? And I heard nothing. I went home that night and I prayed and I said, God, what were you trying to speak to me? And nothing. Two weeks later, I went to Dallas for the Bethel conference. And while I was there, it was Friday night and John Bevere had just spoken and he had just given a time for prayer and you could really feel the presence of God in that place. And I remember during that prayer time, I felt the Holy Spirit say, you are that house. And immediately God took me to that point where I was standing in front of that house in my neighborhood, just staring at it. And I began to cry and I sat back down in my chair and God continued to speak to me and said, you are that house and I am building you beam by beam, brick by brick. And you are going to be a shelter for women who are destitute, who are hungry, who are lost, who are lonely, who are naked, and you are going to be a safe place for them. And in that moment, I knew that this book wasn't just something that was my idea. It wasn't going to be something that I was going to do one day. This was a message that God was asking me to do right now because there were women out there that needed it right now. So I came back home and I began to write. I wrote in any free time I had. After I put my two kids to sleep, I would write. I would write during my lunch breaks. I would write whenever I could. Sometimes I would put stuff in my phone. I would write stuff on napkins. As the Holy Spirit inspired me, I wrote down the words. and. I wish I could tell you that it was such a hard journey. It wasn't. It was honestly one of the easiest things I've ever done. And that's because I knew this was something God was doing through me. It wasn't something I was forcing myself to do. It was God speaking through me. So as I sat in front of a computer and started typing it up, the words just came right out as the Holy Spirit inspired me to write. God brought so many people to help me through the process of editing and giving me feedback and encouraging me. And as I finished writing in October, I was done editing and I self-published through Amazon, which is super you know, easy if you just study YouTube. There's tons of videos on it. And I was able to self-publish my book through Amazon in February of 2020. And it was an exciting journey. It was a fun um, 
a journey for me, but it was also something I knew that God was leading me step by step and making the way, opening every door. And it was easy because he was the one that was making it happen. And now it's available on Amazon. It's called, I am not break free from stereotypes and become the woman God made you to be. And it's all about identity. And it's a book. It's a devotional book um, with short entries. So it's easy to read. It's written in a conversational way um, so that anyone from any age range can totally understand um, this book. I have a mom right now who's doing it with her two uh, teenage daughters. I have a dad who purchased the book so he can understand the struggles in the identity department that his daughters are gonna face as they grow up here in this culture. And so it's a book really that will benefit anybody um, at any age, regardless of culture or any of that. So I encourage you to go check it out. It is again, a devotional book called I Am Not Available on Amazon.com. And it can be done by yourself or it can be done with a small group. So it's a wonderful book for your small group as well. I was born in India and I moved to Dallas, Texas when I was seven years old. And my dad's side of the family, everyone was still in India. So it was important to my dad that my brother and I spoke Malayalam, that we understood Malayalam and that we didn't forget the culture so we can go back and visit and connect with them and communicate with them easily. So I knew Malayalam, I sang Malayalam songs, I can still read Malayalam. And it was, you know, one of those things where I was completely Indian at home. I loved of Indian food, Indian clothes, Indian culture. And when I left the house, I was completely American. And so growing up in these two cultures, it was so hard for me to understand who I really was. So as I got older, and I came to the crossroads where I had to make important decisions in my life, I, I had to find, I found this conflict within me happening, wondering what should I choose? Do I choose what the Indian Simi would choose or the American Simi would choose? And I remember being frustrated and my dad sat me down when I was in high school and he said, Simi, your identity does not come from a culture. Your identity comes from Christ. So when you are at those crossroads and you're wondering, what should I do? You go to scripture because that is where you find the identity that God has given you. You are a citizen of heaven. And that gave me so much freedom because in that moment, I knew that I wasn't trying to live up to what culture or the world has said about me, but I was living up to God's version of me, who God designed me to be. And I was becoming more and more transformed in the image of Christ as I made those choices. And as a pastor's wife for about 10 years now, I have seen so many women, young girls to older women, come to church on a Sunday morning and weep at the presence of God, singing those beautiful songs of our identity. I'm no longer a slave. I'm a child of God. I am who you say I am. By about Monday morning, they are struggling in their identity and they're settling for the world's version and definition of who they are. And what often happens is when we don't know who we are in Christ, we will live in search for our identity. There's an innate need in every human being to know their identity, to know who they are, where they belong. And if you don't know, if you're not grounded in the scriptural truth of who you are every single day, then you live in search for your identity. And the thing is, we will fill that statement, I am, with something. And oftentimes we'll use the stories that world or culture has taught us about who we are, our experiences or what others have spoken over us to fill that blank. I am a failure. I am a disappointment. I am ugly. I am naive. I am too emotional. Whatever it is, you will fill that blank with something because that is an innate need inside of all of us. 
But the truth is we weren't meant to live for our identity. We were meant to live from our identity. See, we weren't meant to live for our identity. We were meant to live from our identity. We, meaning we are resting in the finished work of the cross, approved, accepted, and loved. And when we are not living in that truth, then we are gonna live and search for acceptance and approval from the world. And we'll live a life of performance and not a life of purpose. See, you cannot live at your God-given purpose until you know who you are, because what we do flows out of who we are. But sometimes we get that twisted and what we do becomes more important and defines our identity. Right? That's why, especially in our culture, what we do for a living is so important. It holds so much weight in our culture. So there's a pressure like no other on our young people to perform, to pretend. So there is a highlight reel on social media that says your life is perfect and everything is great at work, at school, at home, yet we hear about the suicides, we hear about the divorce and we're in shock. Why? Because they were never real. They could never really find a place where they were safe enough to be real, where they could be vulnerable and not pretend and not perform, but they could rest in their identity of who Jesus says they are. I'm gonna read an excerpt from my book, I Am Not. And it's actually from the last chapter and where I talk about the story of Mary and Martha, which is very familiar to us. You know, in today's culture, there's a stereotype that says women are always overwhelmed and in a hurry. Isn't that the truth? I know as a mom that culture always paints this picture of a hot mess as a mom. And the truth is, that is not the picture how, of how God sees us. That is not the way God designed women to be. And so when we look at the story of Mary and Martha, we see how we can identify with Martha. And I'm gonna read a short excerpt from that last chapter to you. So when we find ourselves in this pattern of performance, we may be keeping God at a distance through lack of prayer, not reading the Bible, or even attending church. We don't need to strive to please or earn his affection or approval. We already have it. Jesus desires us, not what we can bring to the table or accomplish for him. When we truly rest in that amazing love and understand the depth of that love, we are able to do much for the kingdom, not as a striving to gain favor or grace, but serve him from an overflow of his goodness towards us that cannot be contained or silenced. Martha invited Jesus to sit in her home, but forgot to sit with him. We've all been there, but in his love for us, he invites us to sit with him because that is better. I wanna encourage you, no matter what culture has taught you to do, to earn approval, I want you to know that you are already approved. There is nothing you can do to add on, no PhD, no title, no position that you can hold that's gonna make you more worthy in the eyes of God because you are already a son, you are already a daughter. And it is so important for us to understand who we are and who we are not because the world is gonna send us messages, culture, is gonna send us messages all the time that tells us, hey, this is what's gonna make you look valuable. This is gonna, what is gonna make you look more beautiful. This is what is gonna make you uh, look successful or add worth to you. But that is not true. That is not what God wants us to live under. That is a lie. And so when we identify those lies, which is what I do in the book, when we identify those lies, when we identify those stereotypes, we're able to say, I am not.